Hey guys, it's me. It's a post about a broken front indicator light on my BMW E90. Um, if you look at this post, you probably know what the symptom is, but I will show it anyway. So, I make a left turn. This one works, front one doesn't work, so the symptom is that it will blink quickly. Uh, and we have to take this one out which means removing the inner wheel well shield which is fairly easy take the front wheel off remove the shield and then the hard part starts so uh, as i said my indicator is not working if you look in the bmw manual that comes with the car or on youtube videos when you search for how to change my indicator light when it's not working they all point out to these little heads that you have to open so you rotate these plastic lock screws pull it out and then you have access to your light bulb in this case that's not true because uh, we have an LED indicator here in our Xenos Xenos headlight, which is completely different. So there's one screw here, one screw here, and one screw at the top, which you cannot reach from here. So there's more work to do. We have to take this plastic wheel well out. So I took the wheel off. Uh, we have to remove this inner well, which is uh, connected here. It has been shown in a lot of other videos too, but it's, uh, it's simple. There are some screws, this one here, there's one in there, there's one on top, then there's a, a 10 size, a metric 10 is over there, the rest is all 8, socket 8 over here, and there's a few underneath, as you can see, one there, and there is one, anyway, you will figure that out it's, uh, as you go, if it doesn't come up, then you probably forgot one of the screws and you have to check which one it is. So I removed all the screws and now I simply have to take out the um, inner shield. There's a little nuts on the bottom you have to push in. And then uh, it should just come out like that. That's fairly simple as you can see. Okay, so the plastic wheel well is out in the front. This is the headlight unit. You also have easily access to, uh, to the Angel Eyes uh, light bulb if you need to. Um, but this is the unit we're going for. This is the indicator unit that's failing. Um, it has three mounting screws. One is there on top, but that's the one that's difficult to reach. It's a torque screw. I use a normal socket with a torx at the end that fits in there um, so the top screw is uh, difficult to access because this is in front of it what some people state is that you have to loosen this part of the bumper or take the whole bumper off whatever you like uh, to get access to uh, to this corner here so you can access that screw i am not going to do that uh, if you're handy and you have some uh, basic tools you should be able to get it out like this like i said i use this socket torx um, yeah torx socket let's say together with a flexible extension and what i'm doing is i put this socket in here and then hold it and then put um, this flexible extension through this hole on top and put the socket and flexible extension together and with a plier I can put that in the screw head. Uh, also as a remark I don't know if it's really necessary but uh, this screw, I loosened a little, as you can see it's sticking out a little, so in my opinion it's easier if you just, this is also a Torx by the way, 
we just loosen it a little so that the thread is not sticking out anymore. Uh, like that. So you have a little bit more clearance when you pull out the unit. So I will show you how to do it. I take a plier, clamp it here, put this one behind, then put this one through there in front, push the two together so they're connected, and now I have to guide the Torx. That's a little finicky, but it works into it. So there it is. I am connected. So now I can loosen it and um, take the unit out. And putting it back in is the same way, of course. Okay guys, as you can see I got the unit out. Uh, it's sitting in there normally and uh, this top screw is the most difficult part sorry that's the bottom this top screw is the most difficult part to get to the bottom two are easy to to get to uh, but if you have the right tools it should be doable and also as you can see i did not have to remove or loosen part of the bumper or uh, remove the headlight so this saves you a lot of time and it's totally doable uh, again, uh, this is the connector that gives the 12 volts to the electronics and then it transfers to uh, a higher voltage around here. So if your unit is not working and you have it out like this, you can switch on your indicator and measure the voltage on these two points. If there's no voltage at all, then probably this is probably in the electronics or even in this, this connection lead here, which is uh, not likely, but who knows. Uh, if there is voltage here and you measure, it's fluctuating because it's switching on and off. If you measure above 24 volts, uh, up to 30 volts, maybe sometimes you even see 36 volts, depends what the sample rate is of your uh, measurement device. You can assume that the electronics are still fine and there's something wrong with the LEDs. So I took out my, um, my indicator light. This is the one, it has uh, 13 LEDs. electronics on the back side so it seemed to me that the electronics were still working because I still got a voltage here but the LEDs didn't switch on so most likely uh, either LED is broken which can be easily tested or there's a bad connection somewhere so I tested all the LEDs I found out the center one I could not get to work uh, also it's uh, the connectors, uh, the solder connectors of the LED are covered by this insulator so it's not easy to um, to get to that of course but you can put your pins on the LED uh, solder connections next to it and it still didn't switch on so I figured out after pinching a little hole in the insulator plastic um, I figured out that between this point and this point the connection was broken so I put this little wire electrical wire here and now it all works again uh, so now if I would connect it to the to the car and switch on the indicator light the uh, unit should be working again I will show you how to test the LEDs what you have to do for that is you use a, a multimeter uh, you switch it into uh, diode measurement range as the LEDs in principle are diodes you have two leads positive and negative and the LED will only switch on when the positive voltage is on the right side let's say the correct side uh, and the negative voltage of course is also uh, on the correct side so for example as you can see zoom in a little here the LED is under the plastic. There are two solder uh, pads on the side of the LED. So if I put my leads on there and the LED is okay, it should light up. And you can see it's lighting up. 
so that one is, is perfectly fine. If I do this one, for example, you can also see it switches on, it lights up. So this, this multimeter is, is in diode range when it's actually um, connected correctly to the LED, it gives about 1.7 1 volts and this makes the LED switch on. Um, when it's used with the electronics on the back they get probably 2.5, 2.6 volts so the, the light is a lot brighter. So anyway, what I was testing before was measuring from here to here and now you see the center LED switch is on but before it didn't so then either from here to here there's a bad connection or from here to here there's a bad connection which you cannot see because it's under this plastic um, so I pinched little holes in here so my leads could touch the pads and I figured out that from here to here it was fine from here to here it was not so I put this little wire in so I can reach it here and you see it works So now that I fixed it, so I put this little wire in here, now it should all work. Um, I will put it back in the car and we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm putting back in the unit, um, but you have to look out for I put the top screw in already. Uh, it's also possible probably to do it later with a, with a plier. But what you have to look out for is this, um, can you see it, the black wire. So the 12 volt wire, it's not very clear, um, Jesus. As you can see, as, as you push it in, the wire pushes up and it can get in front of the, of the LED. You will see it from here then, uh, once you push it in, you see the, the wire in front of one of these holes. So, uh, and you also feel that it's difficult to get it in, so you have to be careful not to, to pinch that wire. So what I do, I push it around the corner with my finger, make sure it's out of the way, and if I have, uh, when I have the, the unit almost completely in, um, I check if the wire is not in front of it. So the unit is back in, it's fully attached, everything's done. Uh, before I put the wheel well back in, um, I will test uh, Indicator one more time. I did it already before I tightened the screws. You should do that too because if there's an issue then you have a lot of um, extra work. And as you can see it's working perfectly. Actually, I don't know if you can see it. All 13 LEDs are working. So it's excellent. So I put the plastic wheel cover back in and then uh, it's done.